welcome back to The Hook. Now, Josh, it's time for everybody's favorite part of the show. It's the fastest five minutes in sports. Let's see how many topics we can get through. <laughs> and let's start in New England. Patriots tight end Rob Gronkowski is finally seems ready to come back. He's been cleared by doctors. He missed his first six weeks coming off a couple surgeries. How much of an impact would it be if he can come back to this passing game? Oh, I think it's a huge impact for the Patriots. He's one of Tom Brady's favorite targets. He's that mismatch in the passing game where linebackers can't cover him. He's too uh, big and too athletic for them. And then for DBs, he's just too big for them. They can't keep up with him. So I think this is huge for the Patriots if they, uh, excuse me, if, as they have been struggling as of late in the passing game. Right, and I think it's going to help them a lot because because Brady's current targets are pretty inexperienced with Kimbrell Tompkins being one of the leading guys. He had that game-winning touchdown last week. Yes. Uh, Gronkowski is a veteran. He's somebody who, like you said, creates a lot of mismatches. He's been beating up the, the Patriots' DBs in, in practice, apparently, so I think that this is going to be a huge a huge gain for Brady in the, in the Patriots' offense. Absolutely. So in a recent poll, players around the league were asked if you had to pick between Kobe, LeBron, or MJ to make the game-winning shot. 88% chose MJ, 12 chose Kobe, and none, let me repeat, none chose LeBron. If you had to choose, who would take the clutch shot for you, Peter? Uh, I, got, I got to go with Jordan. I mean, he, he's won the sixth championship. He's never lost in the finals. Uh, he, was, he was pretty much automatic and he had a lot of big shots along the way. I think... I, I don't think you can argue against Michael Jordan. Yeah, I, absolutely. There's no doubt about it. It has to be Jordan for me, too. Uh, but if I had to choose someone from my era, it would be Kobe. No, no doubts about it. He's, I think he's the closest player who has gotten to Jordan in terms of just drive and cl uh, clutchness, if you will, uh, in this generation. Yeah, I'm not going to disagree with you there. Let's go to the NFL. DeMarcus Ware is calling himself a game-time decision this Sunday against the Eagles after su suffering a quad strain last week against the Redskins. Now, that usually takes three or four weeks to come back from. Do you think it's risky for him to try to push it too much? I do think – I do think it is risky. Uh, the Cowboys need him for the red a long stretch of the season. They don't need him just to go out for one game against Philadelphia, although it is against Philadelphia for uh, one of those division matchups. But uh, I do think it is a little too close for uh, Worth to uh, stretch himself like that. I think if he's able to limit himself, it could be a big deal for him to play. Now, we've seen a lot of injuries along this defensive line. They switched to the 4-3, but we really haven't seen the guys that they wanted to have out there. Of course, Anthony Spencer is out for the season. Jay Ratliff got released. Now, DeMarcus Ware is really the, the last anchor of those guys uh, remaining. So if he's cleared to play, I think that they should limit the amount that he's on the field, but definitely get him out there for pass rushing situations right. at least. Yeah. So uh, this weekend, number five Florida State takes on number three Clemson at Death Valley with a battle of the QB Titans, Taj Boyd, Jameis Winston, Peter, who are you taking? I'm taking Taj Boyd and Clemson. Really? And that's because not only is it home, that's not the biggest reason I want to, but it's because Taj Boyd is experienced. Jameis Winston hasn't played in a lot of games like this. Uh, Taj Boyd had a great performance this year against Georgia. So I, I think that he's more prepared to be able to win this big game with a lot of fans watching, a lot of the public eye being on it, and I think that he's going to be the one to get it done. Well, I'm going to have to go a little bit opposite for you, and I, I'm going to take the freshman phenom this game. Uh, James Winston has just been phenomenal all season. I think this is the game where he uh, puts it, he performs the national stage and enters that uh, Heisman lead for the rest of the season. Yeah, I mean, you're right. They do always, there always seems to be one game that these guys have to win to define themselves to win the Heisman. We saw it last year with Manziel beating Alabama. Maybe this could be Winston's game. Right now, though, I, I'm taking the veteran. I'm taking Famous. Boyd. I think that the fact that he's at Death Valley will help, but more so, I think that his experience gets it done for them. Got you. Uh, Derek Rose just came back, played his first preseason game. He missed almost, a, he missed more than a year all of last season with, a, with an ACL injury. Uh, he said the Pacers are great, but the Heat are the Bulls' only rival. Now, do you think that Rose is discounting the Pacers a little bit too much in the East and saying that? Absolutely. After looking at what the Pacers accomplished against the Heat last season, I think you absolutely have to take the uh, Pacers as a threat, especially with the emergence of Paul George and Roy Hibbert as key members of that Pacers team who can be uh, defensive and uh, offensive uh, leaders for the team. I think right now Rose just needs to focus on uh, performing on the court and uh, – uh, getting his team to the playoffs, uh, let alone just talking yeah, noise. Those, those are fighting words for somebody who hasn't played in more than exactly. a year. Uh, I don't really see where he's coming from. The Pacers have been a top seed and a, a top three seed in each of the last two seasons. They played the Heat twice in the playoffs and played them t puff, uh, tough both times. This is a team that's only going to get better. They're young. I think they actually have a better chance than the Bulls this season, honestly. Really? Yeah, I really do. Okay. 
Rumor has it that Kansas freshman Andrew Wiggins, who has not played a college game, mind you, will have a $180 million contract from Adidas on the table. Is this a ridiculous or fair amount for Andrew Wiggins? It's absolutely ridiculous. <laughs> he hasn't played a game yet. I think that should pretty much settle that matter. Absolutely. Just totally ridiculous. However, if you're Andrew Wiggins, you have to be pretty excited about yeah. prospects no, once you I, <laughs> come out of college. If you're, if you're him, you take that. Absolutely. <laughs> well, thank you for joining us on this edition of The Hook. Uh, make sure to tune in next week as well. Uh, we air at 8 o'clock. Uh, and follow us on Twitter uh, at underscore The Hook for uh, Peter Spindorio and Master Control. We say thank you for joining us, and you all have a great weekend.